Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I do my illustrations and more recently they're going to be on my mugs on my website, thepaperboxdesign.com. So to start off, you have to have your color palette. Um, the color palette that I chose is bright and colorful and cheerful and hopefully I can pull a little bit of humor out of it. The next step is to sketch out your design and then you're going to pick out your favorite brush and you will outline all of your sketches and fill in each shape. Make sure you put all of your shapes on its own layer. So if you can see here, I did put the rim of the flower pot on its own layer and the bottom part of the flower pot on its own layer. So once you have that outlined and filled in with the color that will be your base color, you're gonna go back and select that shape in that specific layer, add a new layer with the same shape selected still, and then you will pick a darker color based off of your base color, and you're going to brush over where your shadow will be on this new layer. Don't forget to use your eraser tool. Your eraser tool is just as important as all of your other brushes. Um, I've used it just to help define all of my shapes. And I also use it with a lower opacity to tone down the shadows and the highlights and kind of blend it a little bit better. And then once your shadows are all finished, you're going to keep the selection and add a new layer. And then with a lighter color, you will go back in and add your highlights. So here I would like to tell you guys, um, I'm using Grut brushes, and I did have to purchase these brushes, but they are totally worth the purchase. I think they were only $20. It is a total game changer, a definite confidence booster for me, and um, they're just fun to work with. There are over a hundred different brushes. Personally, I only use two or three of them and my eraser, um, but for each illustration, I'm sure you will find a use for more than that. My favorite to use is the Gulf Stream brush. That's my basic brush that I like to use, but um, I do not like the airbrush feature on it, so I turn that off. And then I also like to use Sleek Eel, Linoleum Roll, and Stiff Lilt. That is L-I-L-T. Here, since I'm using the same color, I am doing all of my stems and leaves on one layer just because they're kind of already separated. I don't have to separate them by layers. Um, and the only reason for that is because each shape that I have on here is going to have its own shadow and highlight and they're not really touching each other so it's just easier for me to have them on one layer in this in this particular shape. So now you're going to select your basic shape that you've done, add a new layer, and with the same selection you're going to take your lighter color and paint over where you think the highlights will be. Once that's done, you keep the same selection, but you add a new layer and you're going to add a darker shade on the top of that and that will be your shadow. And you're going to do this with each shape in your illustration. So I know it sounds like it's a lot of work, and it kind of is, but it goes by so fast. And it's really relaxing to do, so I want to encourage you guys to try your own sketches and illustrate them with your paintbrushes on Photoshop.
Now I'm going to go back in and select my basic shape of my petals. And I'm going to add some texture into these petals here. I'm just adding a darker color and just giving some lines to kind of emphasize the shape of the petal itself. And once I have these done, I will go back, keep the same selection, add a new layer, and I will do my highlight on that new layer. And then again, add my shadow. So it's really important to keep in mind where your light is coming from in your own mind so you can give it more of a realistic effect. Once you have your shadows done on the object itself that you're drawing, you need to give that object a sense of space. So where is that object sitting compared to your ground? Um, and to do that, you want to add a shadow for that object altogether on the ground that it's laying on. So here I did the shadow right underneath the flower pot. And I also gave a little hint of the flowers poking up in the air. So the farther away that your object is from the ground, the lighter the shadow is going to be. So I tried to illustrate that here in my flowers. Um, the tops of the flowers are going to have a little bit more of a faded shade. And anything that's closer to the ground is going to have a darker shadow. So keep that in mind play around with your illustrations, and don't forget to practice. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless.